Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 29th of May 2020. And yesterday we published a late market update video entitled Market Update Equities Fall Last Minute, where we pointed out that although equities had risen, they had fallen back in the last hour of trading because of an unexpected announcement scheduled by President Trump today on China. Now, gold, when we published that video, was trading at $1,717 and silver at $17.38. And we concluded the video by stating, quote, Now, between starting this podcast and finishing it, which is just one hour, we have noticed that the Dow has moved into negative territory and is now down 165 points. The S&P is up just six points and the Nasdaq is down 46 points. You may recall that we've stated to watch the issue of China, and in the last 30 minutes or so, President Trump has stated that he's making an announcement on China tomorrow. This has clearly spooked markets, and if there is follow-through tomorrow, will prove to be good for gold and silver prices. End quote. Well, at the time of producing this podcast video, which is 1454 GMT plus one, Gold has risen $10 to $17.27, and silver, too, has gushed ahead to $17.73. That's some 35 cents higher than when we reported yesterday. Now, tomorrow we shall be providing our weekly update, but it's worth noting at this stage, and of course there's still plenty of time for the day to, to run, that virtually all European markets are down around 1% a similar amount to Asian markets overnight, while US stocks are currently meandering in minor negative territory awaiting this announcement. Now, crude oil prices are down just 50 cents broadly, and the dollar index is hovering just above the 98 level at 98.18, again down on yesterday. Now, there have been some economic data announcements, including Brazil having a fall in GDP of 1.5% this quarter compared with the previous quarter, now seeing it reach levels similar to that as experienced as far back as 2012. Now, US consumer spending is down 13.6% for April compared with minus 6.9% in March, and core inflation is minus 0.4% compared with 0% in March and minus 0.3% expectations. We're still awaiting the Consumer Sentiment Index to be announced shortly. The story, though, today is frankly silver shooting above 1750 resistance and heading for that elusive $18 level. We stated it will attempt to reach, if not breach, if it could. Silver has been as high as 1784 today and as low as 1729 and is almost up 2%. Now, if Trump's announcement is very hawkish, then we can see silver and gold move higher. If it's more moderate than expectations, then they will fall back slightly. We shall all know this and the answer to this in a couple of hours' time. Now, if silver does hit $18, then 1850 will certainly be on the cards, though we suspect it would need some follow-through next week for that to be achieved. And as we can tell, and we did last night, <laughs> witness this, a lot can happen in an hour, let alone a weekend. Now, interestingly, Bloomberg reported less than half an hour ago, and we shall quote what they've reported. US consumer spending, which accounts for about two-thirds of the world's largest economy, plunged in April by the most on record after the coronavirus pandemic halted purchases of all but the most essential goods and services. Household outlays fell 13.6% from the prior month, the sharpest drop in Commerce Department records back to 1959, data showed Friday. The median estimate in a Bloomberg survey of economists called for a 12.8% decline. So you have 13.6% compared to a 12.8% expectation. Incomes posted a record, though, 10.5% increase compared with estimates for a 5.9% decline as federal stimulus payments were distributed under the CARES Act, the report said. It showed government social benefits rose by $3 trillion in April, up from a $70.2 billion gain the prior month. With a drop in spending, the personal savings rate jumped to a record 33% from 12.7%. 
the Federal Reserve's preferred gauge of consumer prices rose half a percent from a year earlier, the slowest pace since 1961, and far below the central bank's 2% target. The core price index, which excludes more volatile food and energy costs, advanced 1%, the least since 2011. Unquote. We want to add something here. When you see videos like Mike Maloney and other of the pumpers telling you hyperinflation is within our grasp, it's a load of nonsense. Eventually, it may come, though we suspect reasonable levels of inflation will eventually occur. But what governments have to cope with now, and even with all these stimulus checks being issued, we're actually seeing negative inflation occurring. So please do not be suckered in by this hyperinflation argument. You will do so at your cost. Right, let's go back to the article. Quote, quote, While the income replacement is helping consumers and Americans are slowly returning to travelling and eating out, economists expect it will take at least a year before spending recovers to pre-virus levels, especially with no vaccine or significant treatment yet in sight for a disease that's killed more than 100,000 Americans, the highest official toll in the world. In a contrast with the headline income numbers, wages and salaries fell 8% from the prior month amid widespread job losses, reductions in hours and pay cuts. The income category of personal current transfer receipts surged 89.6%. A separate report Friday showed U.S. merchandise trade in April slumped to the lowest level in a decade as the pandemic curtailed demand and disrupted supply lines. After adjusting for inflation, spending fell by 13.2% in April, also the most ever, supporting forecasts for a gross domestic product to shrink by a record in the April to June period. The main drivers of the monthly decline were spending on food and beverages, restaurants, hotels and healthcare. Unquote. So you see, as we've mentioned in recent previous videos, there's essentially two types of inflation. One is demand pull and the other is cost push. And this is what anyone studying economics learns in their very first year. Demand pull is when the demand for the availability of goods outstrips the supply and therefore it pulls up prices, which is why they call it demand pull, and the alternative is cost push, where the costs of producing goods increase, perhaps through currency devaluation, that's a possibility, and therefore the cost of producing those goods causes their prices to rise, and you have cost push. Now, you could argue, of course, ah, we may enter a situation of cost push inflation because the dollar falls in value. Well, first of all, what's it falling in value against? The answer is other currencies. But is it falling compared to those? Generally, it's holding up well. But even if you assume that it is, you also then have to bear in mind that if demand for goods is already at a low ebb, and although it will slowly recover, it will be a slow recovery. As people now approaching 41 million job losses in the last 10 weeks are not going to be, have the resources to rush out and start buying those goods. So this is why, to a large extent, inflation will be curtailed for some significant period of time. And that's even without any, what we would call, financial skullduggery by trying to export that inflation elsewhere. Now, going back to politics for a moment. President Trump has written an executive order which some see as restricting certain aspects of social media. And there has been a small Republican kickback behind the scenes, but we suspect the president will get most of his own way. He is, though, in a difficult position, though. As with regards to Twitter, the president is relying on that media source to convey his message to his base and the world at large. And any restrictions he places on it could potentially backfire on his reach. So this is an interesting aside to watch over the coming days. Now back to economic news. We shall publish our weekly update tomorrow and we'll comment more deeply on silver 
showing where the technicals lie as well as fundamental silver demand. But what we have been seeing recently, of course, is that as lockdowns ease, then silver demand expectations for industrial purposes start to rise again. And this is why silver's gold to silver ratio has fallen from 113 to 1 to below 100 to 1. And we're expecting it to fall further, more towards the early 90 to 1 level. So, bearing all this in mind, and we're producing this podcast earlier than we have in the last couple of days, please accept that when this is published, which will be about an hour after producing it, figures will have changed. But we shall provide the update tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening. Do share your comments and thoughts. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. Not forgetting that we update our Richard and Greg channel every few days. And do pop along and take a look at that. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.